Now that we're two decades into the century, it's time to start evaluating our favorite films. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 teen movies of the century so far. For this list, we'll be looking at our favorite films that center on teenagers and or adolescents that were released in 2000 or later. Can I try it really quick? <laughs> Number 20, Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. While some of the movies on our list today are going to be light-hearted high school romps, this isn't one of them. Rachel's been diagnosed with leukemia. They just found out. Despite the fact that it deals with a teen facing terminal cancer, though, Me and Earl and the Dying Girl actually has much more levity than you would imagine. Mm. What is that noise? It's a regretful polar bear. It's a sweet coming-of-age film that looks at the typical experience of being a teenager with the added gravity of being confronted with mortality. It'll make you laugh, it'll make you cry, and you'll definitely be thinking about it long after it's over. Get out of here, Craig. You've done your time. You don't have to hang around with a sick girl anymore. How can you even say that to me? Number 19, She's the Man. Who knew that William Shakespeare's comedic play Twelfth Night would make the perfect background for a hilarious teen romance movie? I just don't want to see you get hurt. We are so full of Back to practice. In this 2006 film, Amanda Bynes plays Viola Hastings, a girl who loves playing soccer, but is dismayed when her team is cut. She decides to take matters into her own hands and disguise herself as her twin brother Sebastian and play for the guys' team instead to prove a point. No hakalugi. <sighs> I'm so proud! <laughs> this movie is, of course, full of laugh-out-loud hijinks, especially when Viola finds herself falling for one of her teammates. You and Viola, I mean, be magic. I don't know. Number 18. A Cinderella Story. Some of the movies on our list are critically acclaimed films that received Oscar nominations, but this one didn't exactly fare well with the critics, receiving a dismal 12% on Rotten Tomatoes. And you thought they didn't even know you existed. Right. But critics aren't the only ones with opinions, and we love this charming modern day fairy tale starring Hilary Duff and Chad Michael Murray. Don't you know who I am? Of course I do. The Princeton girl. You're the girl I've been waiting to meet. I know exactly who you are. Does it make sense that Austin doesn't recognize Sam just because she's wearing a small mask? No. But do we care? Definitely not. Of course, this movie has a picture-perfect happily ever after, and we wouldn't have it any other way. Number 17, Sing Street. This low-budget production was a collaboration between Ireland, the US, and the UK, and the result was a perfect teen movie about a Dublin adolescent in the 80s who starts a band with the goal of getting his crush to fall for him. You lied? No, I'm trying to give up. The movie even received a nomination for Best Motion Picture Musical or Comedy at the Golden Globe Awards. Can you really not swim? No. So why'd you do that then? For our art. If you're a music fan looking for something uplifting that'll leave you wanting to sing along with the characters, look no further than this sadly underrated movie. Drive it like you stole it. Drive it like you stole it. Number 16, Eighth Grade. We never could have imagined that comedian Bo Burnham could have created such a heartfelt film about a young teenage girl living in the social media era. But in 2018, he did just that, impressing critics and viewers in the process. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope some of you guys found it helpful. Um, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Elsie Fisher shines as the desperately awkward protagonist Kayla, who you can't help but root for throughout the story, even if you're busy cringing and covering your eyes while remembering your own uncomfortable middle school experiences. Uh. This movie will break your heart and leave you wishing you could see Kayla living her best life all grown up. So the thing about growing up is that it's going to happen. So don't fight it. Number 15, Freaky Friday. Before Lindsay Lohan became known for her antics in the tabloids, she was starring in adorable teen comedies like Freaky Friday. Excuse me, is this yours? Thanks. The premise is that she's a rebellious teen who doesn't see eye to eye with her mother about anything, until they inadvertently switch bodies one day. You're not my mother. Yes, I am. Get away, you clone freak! 
Don't you use that tone with me. Both Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis do a remarkably good job of impersonating each other's mannerisms, and the film comes to a surprisingly emotional conclusion. Not to mention, this movie made little rocker chicks out of many of us when we saw it in high school. You're the kind of friend who always spends when I'm broken. Number 14, Juno. Has there ever been such a hilarious look at unintentional teen pregnancy? I'm pregnant. Oh God. When it was released in 2007, Juno was a massive critical and commercial success, making $231 million on a budget of under $10 million. This is the most magnificent discarded living room set I've ever seen. It looks at the story of a 16-year-old girl who decides to give her baby up for adoption after becoming pregnant by mistake. And while the movie starts off as quirky and full of comedic relief, it takes a more serious and unexpected turn as the action progresses, leading to a conclusion that is both surprising and poignant. Number 13, Bring It On. 2000's Bring It On opens with a bang as we see Torrance Shipman have a cheerleading nightmare dream sequence. <laughs> What follows is a movie that keeps up an exciting pace, shows us fun cheer routines, a bit of romance, and even tackles racism and class disparity. That's all right, that's okay, you're gonna pump our gas today. While some movies from this era don't hold up well 20 years later, this one is just as likable as it was upon its release. While it may not have been initially critically acclaimed, it has achieved cult classic status in the years since. Number 12, Booksmart. The elevator pitch for this movie, which was directed by Olivia Wilde, could have been super bad, but with girls. But the end result was so much more. Feeney Feldstein and Caitlin Deaver star as two high school seniors who have spent their last few years focusing on academics rather than having a good time. We chose, we didn't party because we wanted to focus on school and get into good colleges. And it worked. But the irresponsible people who partied also got into those colleges, they did both. They set out to have one epic night out before graduation and end up getting much more than they bargained for. How old are you, by the way? Does not matter! Okay, that voice did not make you sound older, so you're basically children. It's laugh out loud funny and manages to be silly while also being pretty woke. Love you. Love you. Number 11, Love, Simon. Love, Simon was notably the first time that a major Hollywood studio made a teen movie focusing on a gay protagonist. But beyond its historical significance, it's also a deeply enjoyable film. Hey, morning. Oh. Hey. Sorry, I didn't realize you were masturbating. While many LGBTQ plus narratives told in the mainstream look at the perils of being gay, this one takes a somewhat lighter, though still realistic look at what a teenager's experience might be like coming out today. I've been thinking about why I haven't come out yet. Maybe it's because it doesn't seem fair that only gay people have to come out. Why is straight the default? It features a sweet romance and a cast of likable characters that make us think this will soon become a modern classic. You get to be more you than you have been in... in a very long time. Number 10, The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. It's always tough to adapt a book that has such a loyal following, but they nailed it with the 2005 movie version of The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Call me crazy, but it's scientifically impossible that a pair of pants could fit me. And me. And me. And me. The story is about four friends who are very different from one another, but who happen to fit into the same pair of secondhand jeans. So they use the pants to keep them together even when they're apart. What's so great about an old pair of jeans? Uh, nothing. They they just happen to mysteriously fit us all perfectly. The all-star cast is what carries this movie, with Amber Tamblyn, America Ferreira, Blake Lively, and Alexis Bledel each bringing plenty of heart to their sections of the story. You have something else to do. <laughs> you have us. Number 9, The Princess Diaries. Doesn't everyone dream of suddenly finding out that they're in fact the princess of a small little-known country? We sure did. You are Amelia Mignonette Thermopolis Rinaldi, Princess of Genovia. Me? The modern fairy tale told in The Princess Diaries is tons of fun as we watch Anne Hathaway play the hapless Mia Thermopolis, a clumsy and decidedly ungraceful teen living in San Francisco. When she finds out from her grandmother, 
played flawlessly by Julie Andrews, that she's actually the heir to the kingdom of a fictional country called Genovia, she has to quickly learn how to walk and talk like royalty. We'll rewatch this movie if just for that epic makeover. Better. Much better. Number 8. A Walk to Remember If you were a teen in the early aughts, you almost certainly had your heart broken by this Nicholas Sparks adaptation. So would it kill you to try? Yup, and I'm too young to die. A Walk to Remember introduces us to Jamie, a minister's daughter who seems too pure for this world, and Landon, a bad boy who's part of the wrong crowd. When they're thrown together, Jamie makes Landon promise that he won't fall in love with her, which he takes as some kind of joke. One condition though, Carter. What's that? You have to promise you won't fall in love with me. But they do fall in love, only for their happy ending to be foiled by the fact that Jamie has been hiding her terminal illness from him. You'll need the Kleenex for this one. Number 7. Easy A Inspired by the events of Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter, Easy A stars Emma Stone as a high schooler who lies about losing her virginity to get her friend off her back. Tell me! Fine! We did it! Yes! The casual fib spirals out of control and she finds herself helping her peers come up with equally untrue stories about their own sexual histories. So you're saying I shouldn't really have sex, I should just say I had sex with someone, a girl. Yes, yes. Considering it came out a decade ago, the film does a remarkably good job of tackling the issue of slut-shaming that wasn't nearly as prevalent in the cultural dialogue at the time. Screw all these people, all of them. Haven't you heard? <laughs> I already did. Number 6. The Fault in Our Stars If you think a story about two teenagers battling cancer who fall in love is going to be depressing, well, you'd be right. <coughs> Sorry. My bad. There's no sugarcoating it. The Fault in Our Stars is certainly not a fun-filled romp, but it is a movie that's incredibly touching and shows the inner lives of two kids who are so much more than the diseases they're suffering from. You know this obsession you have with being remembered? Don't get mad. I am mad. I'm mad because I think you're special. And is that not enough? The story takes you to unexpected places. And trust us when we say that the ending is not the one you were expecting. Like all real love stories, ours will die with us. As it should. Number 5. The Perks of Being a Wallflower it may have taken over a decade for Steven Shbosky's novel The Perks of Being a Wallflower to make it to the big screen, but when it finally did, fans were rewarded with an emotionally evocative film that did justice to its source material. Isn't this the best milkshake ever, Alice? Mm. It's even better than the first one. That should come as no surprise considering the fact that Shbosky actually penned the script and directed the film himself. So you want to wear these glasses? I'll protect you. This story about a high schooler dealing with depression and repressed trauma while just trying to make it through each day is both tragic and deeply relatable to anyone who has suffered from mental illness. Why do I and everyone I love pick people who treat us like we're nothing? Number 4. To All the Boys I've Loved Before when Netflix released its teen rom-com To All the Boys I've Loved Before in 2018, people may not have had high expectations. But anyone who has watched it can tell you that this movie will make a fan out of pretty much any viewer. All set. It's very funny. Very necessary. While it harkens back to teen flicks from the 80s in many ways, it also simultaneously feels strikingly modern with its diverse cast and subtly progressive values. Is that sparkly bike out front? Is that your ride? Yeah. Also, any teen movie that can give us a couple we want to ship as much as Lara Jean and Peter is a good one in our books. I need you to know that I like you, Peter Kavinsky. Number 3. Lady Bird While many of the movies on this list may have been popular with audiences, there may not be one quite as critically acclaimed as Lady Bird. What I'd really like is to be on Math Olympiad. But math isn't something you're terribly strong in. That we know of yet. With an impressive 99% on Rotten Tomatoes and five Oscar nods, including Best Picture and Best Actress for Saoirse Ronan's heartbreaking lead performance, Greta Gerwig's solo directorial debut is a coming-of-age story that is not to be missed. I love it. Is it too pink? 
telling the story of a Sacramento teenager who has big dreams for herself, this film is at once hilarious and heartrending. The picture it paints of a mother-daughter relationship would make anyone want to call their mom and tell them they love her. I love you. Thank you. Number 2. The Edge of Seventeen You might be surprised to see a movie so high on this list that many people haven't seen, considering it only brought in $18 million at the box office. How was your weekend? Hmm? It was below average. But consider this a ringing endorsement to watch The Edge of Seventeen if you haven't already. It stars Haley Steinfeld as Nadine, a girl who has to face her best friend starting to date her older brother while she's still getting over her father's death. What are you doing? I'm giving you half my cookie. Why? Make you feel better. The movie is very much set in the modern day, with a cringe-worthy texting scene as one of its most memorable moments. Say something. Oh my god, say something, please help me! You need to watch out for run-on sentences. Something I've loved of the last two decades is how many books are adapted into movies. And it's even better when they're done well. Now before we get to the most fetch number one, here are some honorable mentions. You could do better. <laughs> you hardly know me, so how can you say that? You just do. We sing covers of songs, but we do it without any instruments. It's all from our mouths. Yikes. How's school? Straight A's? Probably. Wait, you changed your name to McLovin? <laughs> McLovin? What kind of a stupid name is that, Fogel? What are you trying to be, an Irish R&B singer? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mean Girls There is no movie that's defined the teen genre more this century so far than this one has. Mean Girls tackled the high school comedy in a snarky and satirical way that makes it stand out among the pack. Shut up. Shut up! I didn't say anything. Regina George and her band of plastics are an over-the-top version of the mean girls that exist in nearly every high school. And the way this film portrays cliques feels oh so real to many. Why are you dressed so scary? It's Halloween. Its legacy and cult following don't look like they're going anywhere anytime soon, with so many quotes and concepts from the movie having entered the cultural lexicon. You go, Glen Coco. Glen Coco? Fall for you, Glen Coco. You go, Glen Coco. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.